What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Cooligans Women's World Cup Daily. I'm Christian Polanco, and I'm absolutely thrilled uh, to have this guest next to me, uh, of course, of the, the, the Levitard family, okay? And I think it's, it's one of the few people on Levitard show that is a true Cooligan supporter, okay? And not a complete soccer hater that is trying to <laughs> bring us down. So we appreciate the love. Everybody, big round of applause for Jessica Smetana, everybody. Jess, what's good? Christian, if I were in the studio when you and Alexis came on the Levitard show last week and Dan told you that you talk too much, I would have yelled at him. I would have supported <laughs> both of you. I, I cringed when I listened back to that segment. I felt terribly for how that went. You had so many good points that you're making about the U.S. women's national team crashing out in the round of 16. And it was met with Christian talks too much and did the U.S. choke. Right, right. Yeah, that's it. Look, it's, it's a thing that I'm, I'm learning very quickly that, you know, even though... Metal Arc Media hired us to talk about soccer. The whole uh, the whole point is we don't like that you're talking about soccer so much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so Make it, a real sport. Christian. <laughs> so Come look, on. it's good. it's gonna the the, the job is uh, inherently hostile, you know. Yes. Uh, but but I'm I'm completely up for it because that's uh you know that's that's the business that we are in convincing people that this is uh, a, a a fun sport to be a gas bag about. So I'm learning. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, the funnest sport to be a gas bag about, as we saw all of the hot takes from people that have tuned in to watch U.S. women's team play for the first time in four years and uh, come away with it with some very strange <laughs> opinions and things that I had never considered or thought about before. So um, we're, having, yeah. we're having an absolute blast. The Women's World Cup uh, has been awesome. Obviously, the, the, you know, the time zone is, the, is probably the, the biggest challenge, but uh, it's been entertaining nonetheless. But let's get right into it because uh, Spain did play against Sweden this morning, uh, 4 a.m. Eastern time. Um, I was up tuning in, and uh, what a game. I mean, it was mostly what a game in the sense that how did I wake up this early for this terrible of a match? <laughs> and then it became, and this is how the sport is sometimes, where it's just like, oh, my God, this is now one of the most memorable matches I've ever seen at a Women's World Cup. Uh, but Spain ended up uh, winning 2-1 <laughs> to, two to one when, you know, I thought we were going to go to extra time, which would have been a nightmare. Uh, yeah. But three three goals in the last, like, you know, I guess 12 minutes uh, of, uh, of the game. Uh, but what was, uh, how, what was your feeling? Uh, how did you take in this game? Uh, because, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite a wild one. Well, I mean, U.S. fans versus time zones has definitely been the toughest matchup of this World Cup so far. I watched a replay as soon as I got up this morning. So luckily, I was not suffering through that first <laughs> half at 4 a.m. But it, I thought the game really changed when Salma uh, Pariuelo came in for Alexia Putala. She looked like she was playing a different game than everyone else on the field and immediately made an impact when she scored in the second half there. And uh, this has been really shocking because earlier in the tournament, Spain lost four to zero against yeah. Japan. And now they're in the final. And I can't imagine a bigger swing of emotions than Japan immediately becoming the favorite to win this tournament after that game to now being knocked out. And now the team that uh, knocked them out has also been knocked out. It's, it's, like kind of mind-boggling it's kind of a, a shock i mean it you know i guess we don't necessarily see this in um in these tournaments where it's sort of like a tale of of two two teams or two spains you know where yeah. like you can get uh humiliated to that degree where you know we were talking about it a whole bunch because uh japan had like four percent percent possession and got four goals in that game yeah uh, and and it looked like uh, uh, Spain didn't know how to handle a counter-attacking team uh to now kind of playing their game right which is possess the ball I mean they I, I don't even know what the possession was this was 63 uh, percent yeah. possession to 37 and this is uh the, what you're used to seeing uh with just holding on to the ball uh, never getting a shot on target. You know, that's not the priority. We're, we're yeah. out here to play <laughs> beautiful football. <laughs> but a couple a couple really close ones. Like, Redondo's shot was was just barely off target. On and the, that, off should, the ground. that should have been the first goal. I, yeah. And it seemed like if she had, if she knew that the deflection was going to come towards her, like, if she had just gotten up a little bit quicker, she would yeah. have had a really good angle, right, just to sneak it past the keeper. But unfortunately, she didn't, and it went went out barely by yeah, like a foot. I, I was surprised. Um, the you know, I was surprised that there weren't that many shots, but I was also. 
I thought Sweden, to, especially towards later later in the first half, um, they they were, I would say, athletically faster and stronger than Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, but Spain is just everyone is so good on the ball that you you really can't put a body on anybody. But anytime Swe- Sweden, you can tell they 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 there were a couple times where they shoulder to shoulder really knocked yeah. a girl off the ball. Oh yeah. <laughs> and- they were super physical, but also <laughs> to their to their detriment because then at the end when they needed another goal to tie it back up, I thought they they looked a little like they were overly physical. They kept getting fouls called on them and we know that they're so good offset pieces, but when the ball's constantly being called for a, a foul and going the opposite direction, like you're yeah. not going to be able to get those opportunities. Yeah, they uh I I thought they were going to um I don't know, try to use that to their advantage a a, a little bit more but yeah the, i mean the ref was just like all right y'all need to nope. chill a little bit all right because <laughs> there have been uh uh yeah it was so it was it was impressive from spain because they 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 simply again the, the possession it just this happens in a lot of matches where it's just like it frustrates opponents so much we're just like are mm-hmm. we really never gonna get the ball like right. what are you how is everyone freaking iniesta here that <laughs> <laughs> why is everyone so good on the ball but um you know that that was the the, the scary thing that they just spain couldn't find uh, uh any any real chances in the final third but uh, so uh, I, I, the overall story just a, such a huge win for spain this is the first time that they uh obviously make it to the final they are also i believe uh they are the youngest team on average uh to make it into uh, a World Cup final. Uh, you see right here, it says uh, the, the average age is 25.3. Uh, and then we, you think about the U.S. team. The U.S. team, I think the average age was like 20, almost 29. It was like 28 point something. Uh, and then you're like, all right, what's... Are we that old? We didn't, we didn't seem that old, right? We had a lot of young players. So uh, but clearly it's uh, a factor. But the interesting thing here with Spain is uh, we, we haven't had a chance to talk about it on the show yet, but... Uh, Spain had a lot of issues with their uh, with their federation, um, with their coach. Um, uh, there was a protest uh, uh, l- l- up until like early this year, where mm-hmm. a, lo- a lot of the players uh, basically threatened to not even go to this World Cup or not play for uh, Spain again. They they rejected call ups, and it was a, a, a really big fight between the, uh, the federation and the players. And really, the main thing was because of their coach Jorge Vilda. Um, he they they are not fans of him. They do, they have made it very clear they don't want him as the coach. Even at this World Cup, they've been press conferences where the players have just been like, nothing has changed. We are not happy with the federation, and it, it's a very contentious relationship with their coach but they but they're still doing it they're they're still succeeding in spite of uh having the issues with the uh, with the coach and and just to like help frame this a little bit uh some the main complaint with the coach has been um i've heard that he's just incredibly strict and then the one detail that seems very very odd is that he he doesn't allow the players to close their hotel room doors uh when they're on like road trips and stuff which sounds a, so weird. It's uncomfortable even saying that. Yeah, I, I hadn't I hadn't heard that specific complaint, but I had heard that they were upset with like a lack of professionalism just in general from the Federation and having to take bus rides instead of flights to games and things like that, like the same type of treatment that the U.S. Women's National Team had complained about in years past where like. We're not getting the facilities that we need to actually be a successful team, and we're not happy with it. But it, does, it they were specifically angry at him, although they the players claimed that they never called for him to get fired, but um, the federation said that they did. So there's just like a lot of animosity. Some players have have like made nice and ended up playing for the team despite being part of the letter that was sent to the federation. So there's like everyone kind of has a different. Uh, like a different say in the matter, which doesn't, you know, sound like a great thing to build team chemistry. If everyone is mad or, or hasn't had their issue resolved yet, or is mad that there are some really good players that stayed home from this world cup that should have been on the roster. Um, It's very bizarre. I actually heard, I think it was on Meg Lanahan's podcast. She was like, is this just what happens when there's a common enemy and everyone hates the coach who can come together and (laughs) play really well in spite of him. And I thought that that was a funny point. Cause I mean, in spite of all of this, they are now in the World Cup final. They're going to play their England or Australia on Sunday morning. Yeah, I'm, in these scenarios, I, you know, I think most people probably side with the players. And, and I think that make, makes the most sense. And, and it's an interesting thing. You should, 
uh, there's a clip. Uh, I had heard like a lot of the details on um, uh, recap, uh, Kristen Press and Toby Heath's uh, podcast. And there's a clip that Kristen Press posted on her Instagram talking about the Spanish national team and the issues that they were going through. And Alexia Putellas in the comments is like, you know, fire emojis and all the details. So I'm like, I think, why would she, she's publicly, she's at at the World Cup, watching this on Instagram, seeing other people talk about the struggles that they're going through. And she's like, all right, yeah, you know, bullseye emoji. You got it, sis, you know? So uh, it feels like it's probably pretty uh, accurate with, uh, you know, with the the issues with their coach. (laughs) And it's totally crazy. Like I have, I have seen uh, a few, I think like misleading comments about the situation that take the Federation and the coaches side on it. And I think that if you are a fan of women's soccer at any, anywhere in the world, like I would be really hesitant to side with a Federation or a coach knowing how, you know, just because it's not, I'm not saying like you're guilty by association, but we've seen so many other teams, whether on the club level or the international level have issues with coaches or with their Federation, not treating them with respect that I think you should definitely listen when a group of players is writing a letter and put it being, being willing to sit out of a world cup. It is a a once every four year opportunity. Like obviously things have to be pretty bad for you to, be okay with sitting at home or maybe not even okay with it. I'm the players that are, some of them that are at home are, are not happy about it. I'm giving, <laughs> giving quotes being like, this is not what we wanted, by the way. Like we're not cool. Yeah. This. this is like heartbreaking for us. It's not an opportunity you get every year. And, and I mean, it's have such, to be pretty bad for them to be like yeah. able to do that. And it's weird. There's so much, there's, overwhelming evidence that this is probably happening or just in general uh, across different federations all over the world uh yeah. to 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 defend it in any real way is is a little is a little sus in my opinion and and yeah. uh, it, it was interesting watching um on on Fox Sports because the um uh, Alexi you know who's who's you know I mean uh, this is this is his Super Bowl, bro. As yeah, right. far as the, the, the hot take machine, uh, he's been getting obviously very, very criticized. Um, but this is the opportunity. You know, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's if it's completely intentional. I don't even know if it's totally like ignorant per se. Maybe he truly just believes this stuff. But the um, he had mentioned on the broadcast that, uh, you know, he mentioned the, the, the coach and that that that. that you know, the team was winning uh, in spite of all the issues, but he sort of said it like the player, basically the players are have all these issues with the coach, but look at what he's done, get, getting them to the final. And it's like, I right, I don't know if it's all that. I mean, the players have been very, you know, upfront that they, they are really not yeah. happy. And maybe he hasn't made the best decisions too. I don't know if you can give him a ton of credit, especially <laughs> in this game when like clearly like Alexia Puteas is coming back from a really, really yeah. tough injury. She hasn't been able to play a full game in over a year. And it, you could tell like she hasn't been herself. She's one of the best players in the world. She has not looked like herself. And as soon as she came out, Spain was back on the attack and able to win the game. And I, I don't like that's a decision that I think you have to look at the coach and be like, why did you put her in to start the game? And yeah. what made you think that she was ready to go out there? She was clearly not playing as well as she should or as well as she usually is. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's an interesting uh, point because uh, Pariuelo, uh, the last two games have, have really been the difference. She's so good. And she's, <laughs> she's 19. So like she is the future of the squad for sure. Right. And, and, that- and I think Bon Mati is playing better at in midfield too when she's kind of by herself able to create chances. Right, right, right. I mean, th- there was a, a, a tweet uh, that you had uh, uh, mentioned uh, from Chris uh, Falica, the the bear who we've seen yeah, on, the on on the Fox broadcast, and uh, he's the the is betting with the bear. So I've seen that, uh, and he he wrote <laughs> this tweet. It's a very it's just kind of a strange one, and he just says, "Kudos to Spain." For basically saying, quote, you don't want to play for this coach, fine, don't play, we aren't getting rid of him, and then bringing in a bunch of new players and reaching the final. Which is not really accurate. They did not bring a bunch of new players that, you know, like scabs yeah. that right. are... <laughs> Right. I just like, I just don't think like, I, I loved the bear on college game day. All right. Like we follow each other on Twitter, but I don't think that I would ever be like credit to the Sp- Spanish Federation yeah. knowing what's happened the last year. I I personally would not. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just, it's, it's giving very like, you know, uh, you know, we're with the studios sag after <laughs> they need to figure out <laughs> they're asking for yeah. too much, you know, bring in new people that aren't going to complain and whine. And it's like, well, maybe you should listen to what they're complaining about. Maybe you know, there's something to it. 
I just I just love uh, Jeff Bezos' business model. <laughs> I, he's just a good guy. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so it's very, very wild. But uh, no, but it, it's still a, a huge uh, uh, story for Spain. And, and we'll talk about not only, you know, giving Spain their flowers, but we have to talk about uh, Sweden in a little bit because uh, the one suggestion I would always make to, to any team that loses uh, in any World, uh, World Cup, it's obviously disappointing, but the best way to handle it is just chill with an ice cold course light uh smetty that is the move <laughs> sweden's gonna need it more than ever and then and they can also do that while watching leagues cup because Lionel messi is playing tonight i'm sure they'll find it very entertaining it's very therapeutic to watch this man play especially after losing a world cup it's uh i don't i mean i i say that out loud no idea if it's helpful but i'm gonna keep suggesting it <laughs> <laughs> have you you've been watching i'm sure i mean look miami has completely changed because of Lionel messi how what's the experience there like Hmm, here's my thing. I'm zigging while everyone's zagging. Tonight, everyone in Miami is going to be watching the Inner Miami game. I'm going to be at the Marlins game where tickets are going for as much as $5. <laughs> so you'll have to, I'll have to listen to this show uh, later this week and see what happens. Okay, that's great. Look at that. Uh, you you know, Messi, I never heard of the guy. Just, uh, what's, all, what's all this ruckus? The thing uh, about <laughs> Messi is that I'm not getting on I-95 ever after a work day during rush hour to right. drive to Fort Lauderdale and watch an Inner Miami game. If they when they build a stadium down here, I'll go. Okay, perfect. Well, look, that's why we we all have Apple TV and are watching on MLS exactly. season pass. All right. <laughs> so this summer, stay passionate and stay refreshed with an ice cold Coors Light, official beer of Leagues Cup 2023. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Let's go. Well done, Smitty. Look at this. You're doing the ad reads. Uh, it's, it's, it's all it's teamwork. All right. It's a <laughs> so. Definitely. Um, all right. Let's talk about Sweden because they lose uh, again in a semifinal. And uh, I, this, I'm, this is basically what we're used to uh, used to seeing. I mean, they, they obviously losing to Spain two to one. They lost in 2019 one nil to Netherlands. Netherlands obviously went over, went and played in the final and lost to the U.S. Um, 2011 they lose to Japan. Uh, they in 2003 they lose to uh, Canada, and in, in 1991 they lose to to Norway. So not a great history in semifinals. What what do you think went wrong for Sweden in this game? Oh my gosh. I I also want to mention they've been the runners up in the last two Olympics. They have not been able right. to to clinch an Olympic gold medal despite being really really close the last couple times. But um what went wrong for Spain? I mean or for Sweden, I should say. I, I just thought that like they were not like you said they were not able to possess the ball. Um I think the thing that they've been really good at again is the set pieces and using their height to their advantage and being able to like out physical players in the box and they had a couple of those opportunities but were really not able to get anything meaningful. Um and their midfield just was not as as strong as you would hope that they'd play in a semifinal game and I thought Spain kind of just played around them and they were able Spain just plays their game like they they stayed calm and they got their chances when they came but I, I don't think Sweden had much of an answer for them offensively yeah the um I mean I, I couldn't believe they scored and in the in the way that they did right <laughs> they, to, to tie the game True. they were just really uh you know no chances for for both yeah. teams in this game and then to uh you know to score the goal that they scored it, it th this always happens uh in soccer where as soon as you score something in your brain shuts yes. off on like uh, exactly how to defend you you forget what what your position originally was and yeah and well and spain beat them at their own game because <laughs> the corner kick it was like just an amazing play but also no one from sweden was defending Carmona, who's yeah. you know plays left back but comes up and attacks a lot. She got the ball at the top of the box and took an amazing shot. Probably should have been saved. I don't know, you know, yeah, Sweden's keepers had a really good tournament, so yeah, I'm, I'll yeah. give her credit. Like I think she knows what she's doing. Generally, she's pretty good, but um, yeah, it was a tough one to defend or tough one to save, but not you know. You have yeah. to have a defender on her. It, it's she was wide open. Yeah, it's I would I would kind of chalk it up to maybe like tired legs and like not. Yeah. I think there's also a little bit of like 
ain't no way she's shoot, shooting this. And if she does, <laughs> there's no way she's scoring it. I mean, they're not that much better than us. And that's exactly what Carmona ended up doing. Um, yeah. the, the, on, the, on the Sweden goal, it was um, the, uh, oh, I, forgot, I forgot her name, the uh, uh, Hudiger, I forgot her name. Or- Oh. Hurtig, Hurtig, Hurtig. Yeah, and she, uh, who's uh, you know the the player that scored the winning penalty uh, against yes. the uh, against the U.S. and really uh, just a, a tremendous contribution in, in getting on the end of that ball and just heading it perfectly and yes. the placement just. I mean, she might as well have been taking a penalty. I mean, it was, it was yeah. just a, a, a great spot and, and, and an incredible finish. And the uh, I, it was as soon as uh, Herte got the, uh, the header, I was like, how is there not a Spanish defender there? It just like yeah. really made no, sen- no sense. But the uh, once the uh, like I, it was impressive that it, you know, what, the goal from Spain came uh, what a minute, two minutes later. And. It, it didn't it didn't uh, uh it didn't seem to affect spain that much i mean or, or sort of <clears throat> what happened to spain after after they scored which they shut off sweden <laughs> shut off immediately right after that and it's so uh it's just so surprising i mean like uh, given the, how how kind of uh odd the game was and no yeah. one's you know a lot of these knockout games this sort of tends to happen where like no one wants to really no one wants to lose so everybody plays a little bit cautious and stuff like that but these last those last 10 minutes were just it, it, it's sort of hard to explain if you have to tell somebody who yeah, didn't watch the game like exactly <laughs> cuz it was it didn't feel like a game where anything was like building towards that right like i felt like when i watched colombia and england play like the last 30 minutes were building towards a goal and it never never yeah, really yeah. came for colombia but like you could feel that they were pressuring they were super intense and i it, this game felt very much like it was played like in between the two attacking thirds and yeah. spain ended up with two better chances and scored on them and that was the difference totally totally and now so we know that spain is going to be in the final uh they will obviously face england or australia who do you think uh gets uh to the final if we give an early prediction i, I mean i think no matter who I pick, they will lose because I am, I've been the world cup jinx. Every team <laughs> that I've decided to jump on the bandwagon for has lost their next game. So I, I want Australia to win, but I think England will win because I think England has just continued to find ways to win every single time that I think they're out. They, they pull me back in. They are <laughs> like, they just know how to finish and they know how to win games. Yeah. Um, I, I do think with how well Australia has been playing and they've made every team that they've played against kind of like just really have a tough time and and yeah. um uh, uh Kennedy their center back like they're just defensively that's why I I I like very very impressed by they're a pretty well balanced team so I I, th- I think Australia can win and I and I don't think it would be that shocking I mean I they're not going to one two three nil or anything like that but they I think they can actually I think I think this goes to penalties like the other game and it'll oh be God. I don't know if I can handle another I, <laughs> France Australia penalties were crazy they were showing a like condensed recap of the PKs before the Spain speeding game and they cut out the last six penalties because that's how long <laughs> the PKs lasted they were like 20 PKs and they were just like each team scored three. Fast yeah, forward yeah. to the end when you know someone's about <laughs> there, to miss one because they just fast forward through half. Them. There was a, a a condensed like maybe sixty second one that 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 was posted on on Twitter and it it's it's almost it's it, they were obviously the most it was the most penalties ever taken in a World Cup. Yeah. But it if you watch it condensed, all you hear is the 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 shots, the the ball going into the net, uh, or the ball being stopped or hitting the post. And and the crowd cheering and it's like I called it um, penalty ASMR. If you only hear <laughs> it, just ksh, ah, sh, sh, and it's just like it's, it's like it's like soothing for some reason. It was really really cool. Uh, it was cool. <laughs> Mackenzie Arnold was great, and apparently you can't even buy her jersey because Nike didn't put the keeper jerseys oh, the, for sale, oh, which is crazy. To yeah, me. man, that's a that's a that's a missed opportunity. Issue. You I guys mean, are every, losing money on that. Everybody, yeah, they're fum- fumbling the bag uh, Seriously. hard. <laughs> The uh, the, the uh, I do want to get your take, um, and we'll wrap up here on just on the U.S. Obviously, we ha- we we haven't spoken oh, about this stuff, but the U.S. Uh, getting knocked out. I mean, you know, we, we when we were on Levitar show, you were not there uh, to, yeah. to to get your reaction. But the uh, look, it's obviously very 
frustrating, but what what did uh, what do you think of how it all went down? Yeah, I mean, I think they're definitely wasting all their time being activists, and that's why they <laughs> lost to Sweden. I, I I don't know. I mean, it's been so frustrating because I do agree that they're this. I think this is a necessary wake up call that they need to like really look deep. Whether the whether the federation will or won't, they really need to look deep and figure out like how are we developing players, how are we giving these players the best chances to to play to well together, to win together, who is managing these players, et cetera. But I also think that like, they still are really good. And a couple of things could have gone differently in this tournament and they would be playing in the semifinals. So yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to be able to fix in time for the Olympics next year, but I am still optimistic that with the talent that this team has and the young players, especially the young players that missed this tournament because of, you know, injury, um, they're still one of the top teams in the world and they just need to be able to put the puzzle pieces together, which is obviously the hard part, but I, I'm not as pessimistic as I think a lot of folks are, but maybe that's just cause I'm stupid. So we'll see. <laughs> well, what, I mean, one of I the hope changes, I'm proven right. <laughs> <laughs> one of the changes they are definitely going to make by the next Olympics is a new coach. There's, yeah. I mean, there's no way, no doubt. Uh, yeah. he, he, uh, Vlaco stays. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, we, I, I've, uh, talked about this ad nauseum it's just uh to me it was a a great team and poor coaching and you know again the, yeah. the the lack of substitutions the lack of players that we just never got to see uh you know i've been talking to all uh, different people in, in, involved in women's soccer and everybody kind of has the same opinion uh, or or at least like you know really can't make sense of uh the tactical kind of uh yeah. decisions yeah but the yeah i think it it will change i the, the main thing that's frustrating is the you know our the, the comment sections have been yeah, an sure. absolute nightmare and it, like the the thing i've been getting a, a a lot and what we see is a lot of like you know rapino ruined this team or or people calling rapino a man for whatever like oh, it's just God. It's yeah, constant it's and it's like rapino horrifying. ruined this team and it's like what about the other two world cups did right. she ruin the team then? She's <laughs> on the Mount Rushmore of <laughs> of soccer players from the United States, men's or women's. She's been more successful in winning than any men's US player ever in yeah, history. I, and yeah. most of the most women's players. So <laughs> I think that that is just such an example of like what I was saying before, just like the casuals who are tu tuning in just to be haters every four years, like they've been waiting for this moment. Yes. And they pounced on it. <laughs> Like they have been waiting and they're like here they're like all right yeah they let's they, go they talk like uh, you know i've been following this team since 99 how dare she i'm just like no you haven't because no, she's literally haven't. been one yeah. of the most successful players the name so. one nwsl <laughs> team like please i can't even it's so yeah, surreal it's, uh, it's only at least for me it's only energized me you know we we, we obviously talk women's soccer on this show uh, pretty often but we we've never done it every single day for for uh -huh. a month and I, I, I don't know, for, at least for me, it's sort of changed something in me where I'm like, OK, you, oh, you're upset that we're talking about this. We're going to talk about this more because yeah. it, it, it really feels like a um, I, I've, I've said this before. But when you talk about women's soccer as a man on the Internet, you start feeling like a woman on the Internet who gets yeah, just, <laughs> out of that all the time. And you're like, I didn't even say anything that controversial. But that's the thing. It's not that like, oh, these people are mad that the U.S. Women's National Team lost. These people are mad that women play soccer yeah. <laughs> fundamentally and that, that they exist and probably make more money than a lot of the people sitting at home exactly. complaining about it. And that's yeah. the issue. And that's that why I'm like, I don't want to let those weirdos like you know muddy the waters and and control the narrative around this team because i still think this team can do a lot of great things together but i do think they need new leadership well said well said all right uh, uh smetty thank you so much uh for joining me seriously uh, appreciate it thank very very you. much is there anything uh you want to let people know anything you want to plug let people know where they can get the best soccer coverage on levitard show yeah um <laughs> well definitely not on the levitard show but you should tune into that i also have a podcast with uh mike golick uh, that's part of DraftKings, Golik and Smeddy. We have Rosie White from the New Zealand, formerly from the New Zealand national team. She played mm -hmm. at UCLA, also and played in the NWSL. She's on this week, so check that out if you want to uh, hear more. Uh, Rosie's World great. Cup. Rosie uh, did uh, did the first episode of uh, World nice. Cover, and Rosie's yeah. Rosie's the best. Yeah, we uh, we actually did a live show when she was with the Chicago Red Stars. We did a live stand up show, uh, and she joined us on stage. Uh, and a couple, uh, Danny Colaprico as well, who used to play for the Red Stars and now plays in San Diego. Uh, but Rosie uh, was great. Uh, seeing seeing soccer players. 
at a comedy club and like actually like show their personality and be funny, it's literally the best. And uh, Danny and and Rosie were awesome. So uh, yeah, go check uh, Rosie White on uh, on uh, Smitty and Golik Show. Um, Smitty, thank you so much. Uh, y'all, the thank absolute you. best. Uh, keep uh, keep crushing it. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody, make sure Thanks. you subscribe to the show at Soccer Coolians uh, on all channels. Uh, you know, subscribe on YouTube, uh, uh, the podcast, uh, Apple Podcast, Spotify. Leave a review if you haven't yet. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I uh, got another fun show planned that we'll be reacting, obviously, to the England and Australia match, It'll be, uh, which should be, uh, be a wild one. So we're almost up. I mean, this is uh, wild. We've been here every single day uh, for the World Cup and, uh, and, you know, just a couple more days left. So to everybody, shout out to everybody for continuing to join us. A lot of people have been really, really supportive, so we appreciate it. All right. For Smeddy uh, and myself, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.